Hey guys, Caleb here from I'll Build Anything, and today I'm going to show you how I put the Harbor Freight Ooga Horn on my VW Jetta. <laughs> So the first thing I had to do was take the grill off, and it's pretty easy. You have to disconnect the little hood latch thing, which, well, I guess that part's not too easy, but you remove that, and then you just uh, pull it right off. And I'll show at the end of the video how I put it back on. And then to remove the bumper, what you have to do to put this horn on, is you take three screws out below the grill and one screw out on either side of the grill on the front. And then you'll see that I start the car and turn the wheels to the side because that's the easiest way to get the screws on the back side of the bumper. And there will be three on each side. And these are like T15, T20, uh, T something. You can look that up. And then you just pick up the bumper and pull it forward. Now I installed lights on this one so that makes it harder but there's quick disconnects on there so that makes it easier so first i take off the i take off the old horn the top one is the honking horn the bottom one is the beeper for whenever you lock the car or unlock it i take the clip off and then there's a little uh thing you press pull the connector off and then I disconnect the battery to work on this it just makes it safer for uh, splicing and whatnot and then this is the only pliers that I had available that day and uh, that I use those to uh, cut the thing off the end of the wires and you, you should use a wire stripper, but I didn't have one, so I just used my pocket knife. So don't pay attention too much to what tools I'm using in this video, just, you just pay attention to the techniques. And so I used butt connectors to connect the uh, old wires going to the horns to the, uh, going to the new horn. And I did accidentally put on uh, the wrong connectors and then I switched them out for butt connectors. And I didn't have crimpers either for these connectors so I just used pliers and pressed on them real tight and that usually works just as well. And so the horn, the new horn does uh, bolt right onto where the old horn was. I believe it's like a 10 millimeter or something around that size. It is long enough that I had to turn it around backwards, but it's still, it's still loud enough you can hear it uh, from outside the car pretty well. And here I am removing this, these connectors because I realized the wires were not long enough to reach the horn, obviously. And so I use this like 12 or 14 gauge wire, maybe 16, to extend it. Now you can see I'm putting the female spade connectors, I think they're called, on the end of these wires. And they just plug right into the, the new uh, horn because it has the terminals on the back of it. Then I use butt connectors and I use heat shrink to connect those wires to the wires that used to go to the horn. And once again, I use uh, fencing pliers to crimp it, which you probably shouldn't do, but 
it worked for me. The tricky part with crimping these onto the old wires is the old wires are like uh, 20 or 22 gauge wire which is really small so you have to be careful when you're crimping them together. But luckily I had enough sticking out that I could do that still. Now you reconnect the battery, the battery terminal. And I didn't have a handle for this that day, so I just tightened it by hand. But it's been tightened since then. And here I am testing my horn, but I had the horn wired up backwards as you can hear, so I had to switch the polarity. <laughs> then I tested it and it worked. And I'm really satisfied with the way that it turned out. It's hilarious to honk at people with that horn. Now, the way you put the bumper back on you got to be careful on the sides because there's channels that the bumper goes into. If you don't get it in that, it'll still be sticking out a little bit and won't go on right. So now you screw the screws back in, three in the middle, two on each side, and then you do the three in each fender well. Now here's how you put it back on. It, I make it look easy because I removed like 10 minutes of fiddling with it, but here's the finished product. And my car is a diesel, that's why the engine sounds like that. But anyway, that's how you install the Harbor Freight Ugahorn.